Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and share the link with whoever you can. Today our topic is about uh, a Muslim is making a challenge for me. Uh, if you remember we showed you that Muhammad uh, one of the proofs that he is a fraud and false prophet that he do, do forget the Quran. Uh, you know Muslim they make a comment and in the videos and always they have their own answers and their answers is unique and this is one is no different a muslim here is saying to me and he's calling me all kind of names <clears throat> he said to me if you are a debate then if you are debate okay if you're if you are are debate uh -huh, then bring the most authentic hadith first sahih al-bukhari and sahih muslim hmm. The funny, I mean, the hadith I was reading for you, it says here, Hassan, the one you are posting, which means good. That's what Hassan mean. <clears throat> it's good, it's fine. However, so you are saying to me, if I give you a hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari, that your prophet, he forget the Quran, you agree that he is a fraud? That's what you are saying. <laughs> and now if I show you the hadith, what he would do? I'm just wondering, you know, like, what he would do now? Are you going to stay with your promise that if I bring you Al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, he will agree with me that Muhammad is a fraud? Or because you are ignorant, you thought this is the only hadith is speaking about your prophet forgetting the Quran. Now, before we go and give uh, show proofs, why Muslims they are so upset from those stories that Muhammad he forget the Quran? <clears throat> See, Muhammad in the Quran he uh, he made a, a statement claiming that Allah is the one who said that statement, and in that statement, Muhammad claimed that Allah gave him Quran and he will never forget the Quran. If we go to the yellow pages of Muhammad, we will find the following. That Muhammad he was a promised it's called in this room and I am not functioning correct oh man yeah in the Quran <clears throat> when Allah he promised that we will recite the Quran for you or we will make you recite the Quran too, and you will not <clears throat> forget. The Muslim they will say, well, hold on. That verse does not prove that Muhammad uh, he did not say he will not forget the Quran. What he said? It says here, <clears throat> we shall declare the message for you and you shall not forget except as Allah wills. <laughs> and look at the reason why Allah will, for he knows what is manifest and what is hiding. What does have to do? What the first part of the verse have to do with the second part? Anyone can tell me? I mean, you are telling me that Allah will make him forget. And you are telling me because Allah, he knew what is hiding? What? is that I you know you expect in the second part of the verse that Allah will tell us why he will make him forget this is have nothing to do with this we will make them a blue and red what this part have to do with this part for Allah knew what is hiding you are telling me why he for why you are causing him to forget now and you are telling me because he knows, Allah, he knows what is mani uh, what is manifest and what is hiding? Hmm. What manifest, what hiding? <clears throat> Already you told him the Quran. 
So neither it is hiding, and you manifest the Quran for him already. Very stupid statement. But actually this verse, simply because Muhammad, he got himself busted. He is a prophet of God. And the verse here saying that Allah will cause him to forget. But remember in the hadith, it's the story is different. The hadith, it doesn't say that Allah caused him to forget. The verse here is speaking about forgetting Quran totally. That's it. <clears throat> None of the Muslims will remember it. And there's a verse about it in different in different location where it says that uh, any verses we cause to be abrogate or to be forgotten in chapter two. Uh, what we will do? We will make something similar or better. If you remember here. <clears throat> None of our revelation we do abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we substitute something better or similar. This verse here saying, you will cause you to forget it, but Allah will make either something better or similar, so you will not forget it totally, really. What the verse here is saying, Allah will give you a replacement. And here you see the irony and the stupidity of this. I mean, why you want to cause me to forget something and then he will give me something similar you see here it's saying he's given us two uh, cases either better or similar so let us focus on similar why i'm going to forget a verse and you will give me a similar verse because similar mean no different same and if we focus on the first one you will make me forget a verse to give me a better verse? I mean, how in the world that work? So here Allah is correcting his decisions and what he said before. He found that the verse he gave you before is worse. And now he decided to make something better. And this is against the nature of God that he is almighty, he is perfect. Everything he say, everything he do is perfect. Here you notice that the Quran is speaking clearly of the imperfection of Allah and Allah is going to do make Quran better than the Quran. He make decision better than previous previous decision. You see, <clears throat> the Muslim they might say to you in this case, well, uh, you know, uh, uh, abrogation happened in uh, different stories. And uh, as an example, you know, Jesus, uh, he came and uh, uh, you know, like uh, he have a new uh, law. No, Jesus, he approved all the law. Jesus, he said, I'm not here, to, I'm not coming to destroy, but to perfect, to complete. He did not destroy the law. Here we notice that the same man, <coughs> sorry, the same man and the same prophet, or he claimed to be a prophet, he gave you a verse, and then second day or a week after or maybe a month after remember the, the period of Muhammad claiming to be a prophet is a very short period so what is the excuse for him to bring a better verses the excuse is very simple actually there's a hadith let me see if I can find it uh, very funny hadith actually will 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 uh, put some light for us on uh, the stupid stories Muhammad always he come with but I don't know if we will find it in the English website because this is a horrible hadith <clears throat> if you remember before I I told you that Muhammad he come with the story of letters <clears throat> let me get some water the story of the letters <clears throat> I apologize my throat is dry <clears throat> so the story of the letters here we go we found it actually 
Muslim they say this a lie the letters have nothing to do with Muhammad forgetting the Quran uh, the letters is Allah you know sending the Quran in different ways what does have to do with forgetting the Quran let us see uh, the hadith in front of us says I had no confession obey he said in my mind from that time I embraced Islam except when confusion sorry the guy is getting confused when I recited a verse and another man recited different differently I said messenger of Allah thought me this and the other man said messenger of Allah thought me that too <laughs> so they are reciting almost the same thing but it's different so the first one he's saying well I am really confused in this time because the guy who recited differently from what I recited he confirmed that the one who taught him this is Muhammad and I am the one who learned from Muhammad too so how we are learning the same verse but those verses are different there's some changes so here the guy, the guy he said continue actually different story is about like almost they kill each other they were fighting you know and there's a guy like well, he, he was arrested and they grabbed him they brought him to Muhammad as if he is a criminal so I went I went to the Prophet and I said oh Prophet of Allah didn't you teach me such and such a verse he said yes the other man said didn't you teach me such and such a verse both of them in the same time Muhammad he said yes and then he said Jibreel and Mikael now look we have a new a new name involved in the revelation of the Quran <laughs> Muslims always they say Ar-Ruh Al-Qudus is Jibreel why because the the Quran says that the one who came down with the Quran uh, is uh, is Jibreel here you notice in Muhammad he added two names now Jibreel and Mikael peace be upon them came to me and Jibreel sat in my right and Mikael sat in my left Jibreel peace, peace upon him said recite the Quran in one way of recitation and Mikael said to me teach him more <laughs> I have to admit Muhammad you are the most funny cute ever you are so, you are so cute so we have two angels one in the left and one in the right and now Muhammad trained them why he gave them the same verses or surahs and they are different he's telling them this is not a mistake you don't understand there's two angels one he sit in my right and one he sit in my left the one who sat in my right, his name is Jibreel. The one who sat in my left, his name is Mikael. And Jibreel, he said to me, reciting Quran in one way. But Mikael, he didn't agree. He said, no more, more, more. Teach him more, teach him more. Until we, there were seven moods of recitation. And each which is good and sound. Here you will notice that Muhammad, he never mentioned this story until he got busted. Two people come to me and they say to me, well, the same, you know, you told us a story and this story does not, it's not the same. You know, especially the Quran is supposedly recited word by word. Remember, Muhammad is not telling a story here. Muhammad is just reciting what he heard. He cannot add a letter. He cannot take a letter. He cannot put a word, he cannot change a word. So he it have to be exactly the same. Copy paste. Muhammad he failed to copy paste. So what he did? He claimed that there's two angels, they came to him and they did that to him. But look, Muhammad, because he's a fraud, and this is Sahih. A Muslim they will say to you, This is not Sahih. It says in the front of your eyes, Sahih. But in different story, Muhammad, 
he present to us different story about how he got the Quran in seven ways here in the story the one who gave him the Quran in this way is Mikael and Jibreel Jibreel he gave Mikael asked for more be my witness Jibreel he is the one recite the Quran Mikael is the one who said to him recite to him more teach him more teach him more until he keeps saying teach him more until there were seven moods of recitation here you will notice that this is very stupid why not because the story is silly but the Quran all of it is seven moods supposedly so Muhammad he learned the whole Quran in one visit If this is only about this verse, then the rest is, is, is false. If this is all about the Quran, that's mean Muhammad, he was able to memorize seven Qurans in one visit. Additional to that, this is a total contradiction from what Muhammad, he said in different place. Always when you are a liar, you don't repeat the story twice correctly. Especially we're talking about prophet who has got, you know, like maybe you can get old, etc. No problem. But this is a this there's a God involved here, you know. This is the word of God. So God He cannot protect Muhammad from forgetting. Look what happened here. The one who was saying, recite to him more. <clears throat> In the previous hadith, it was Mikael and Jibreel. He just do what Mikael asked for, recite to him more, recite him to more. But in the story of Muhammad, in different story, he gave us different, different, totally different account of what happened. In this story, Muhammad is the one saying, "There is only one Jibreel. There is no Mikael." And it is Muhammad who asked, my people cannot, are not capable of doing it, which means one Quran. So Jibreel, he came to Muhammad, this is Sahih Muslim, we can show you from Sahih Bukhari, no problem, which means all is authentic. And the one we showed you previously, remember, it is Sahih too, it's authentic. Allah has commanded you to recite to your people the Quran in one dialect. I don't know here if you notice how something fishy is. I mean, why is Jibreel saying in one dialect? <laughs> you know, most of people when they read, they don't notice. Is it normal to say to a person, Allah told you to recite the Quran in one dialect? Aren't you already doing that? Because remember, until now, obviously, Jibreel, he just gave him one kind of Quran. So why he's saying to him one dialect? Do you notice with me? If I already drive in one car, and you do not give me any other car, so why you are saying one dialect? That doesn't make any sense. So from the beginning, the story is a stupid and Muhammad trying to present his excuse. So he said that he told me to make it in one dialect. And I am the one who told him no. But there's no reason for the angel to say to him, do it in one dialect. Especially he is just giving it as one dialect anyway. The only way to understand this, that this angel, he came to him after Muhammad is messed up and he starts saying the Quran in more than one dialect, which means he's making his own. You know, like if I say to you, I told you wash the dishes in one way obviously you are not washing the dishes in the same as, as I told you if I say to you drive the car in one way which means the way I taught you obviously you are not driving the car as I told you if I say to you uh, make the document in one way which means the one I gave you obviously mean I'm telling you I'm rebuking you don't make another way Otherwise, there is no reason for the angel to say, Allah command you to recite the Quran one way 
if you are doing it in one way anyway. So Muhammad here, the story obviously, he came with it after he messed up and he cannot recite the same verse twice. He either drop words or drop sentence or change the words, etc. Upon this, after Allah, he said, uh, uh, the angel, he told him that, that Allah commanded to <clears throat> read the Quran one way. I ask from Allah pardon and forgiveness. My people are not capable of doing it. Muhammad saying to the angel. Then he came for the second time and said, Allah has commanded you that you should recite the Quran to your people in two dialects. Here, I don't know how many of you, you know, is a, is a deep thinker. You will notice there is something more stupid. Allah, he think it's one way, it's fine. Muhammad, he think one way, it's not. Jibreel, he take the message of Muhammad to Allah that Muhammad, he said, I ask from Allah burden and forgiveness my people are not capable of doing it Allah he take that message into consideration and he think about it let us say he re rethink it and then Allah he sent the message to Muhammad saying okay two time which means he agree with him you are right so now from one to two Muhammad he repeat the same story seven time each time the angel come to him he said to him, I seek burden and forgiveness from Allah. My people are not be able to do it, to do so. And here you notice how stupid this statement is because the Muslim today, they say that one Quran is fine. Actually, they have one Quran. Most of them, they accept the Quran, which is printed in Saudi Arabia, not the Quran in Tunisia or Morocco or etc. Because there's many Qurans with different, different texts. A different citation so the most popular one uh, became the Saudi one the one adopted by the government of Saudi Arabia because they are the one who print uh, a huge amount of Quran and distribute this copies for free around the world hundreds of millions of copies every year is printed and sent overseas so if one Quran can do it, and that's what the Muslim today they say, then Muhammad is a liar again. Because Muhammad saying, one Quran, my people are not capable of doing it. Which means, if you are a Muslim, you have to recite the chapter of Al-Fatiha seven different ways. Otherwise, Muhammad saying, my people are not. And here you see the stupidity again. I mean, which one is harder to recite a book seven times or recite a book in one way? And there's other questions can come behind it, like why Allah did not give Isa seven Injil? Why the people of Isa, they can do it with one Injil? Because according to the Quran, there's only one Injil. Why Allah, he gave Musa's one Torah? Why Musa did not say my people are not capable? Is that because they are Jews, they are smart? And Muhammad tried to insult us as Arab, that we are not smart, and we need seven Quran? But actually, this is, very stupid because one Quran to Quran will not change anything if we still couldn't understand it so what the benefit so here if you compare between the two stories you will notice that this story here does not match with this story here the one who said teach him more it was the uh, angel Mikael he is the one who says Teach him more, teach him more. And this is what, about what? About reciting Quran in different ways. So the Muslim cannot say, oh, this is a different story. This is a different uh, topic. And you will notice here, actually, that this is having the Quran recited in two or three or four or five. It caused confusion. I had no confusion in my mind from the time, the time I embraced Islam, except when I recited the verse, another man, he recited differently. 
So obviously this is not will make it, it will not make it clear that will cause confusion. The Muslim they will say no, the confusion happened because he do not know that the, the prophet he got it in seven time. But hold on. I mean, the guy he was reciting the Quran until that moment and he's fine with it. So why you need to to give it to, to, to make it in different way? <laughs> isn't it? I mean, isn't it really obvious that this guy is a fraud? Now, this guy he here, he said to me, Well, if you want to bring something, bring from Sahih Muslim al-Bukhari. And that supposedly will prove that Muhammad is a fraud. So he's saying you are quoting for us a hadith which is not Sahih. When in fact I am not quoting any hadith except what is Sahih. You see, when you call a hadith Hassan, that means it is Sahih. Hassan means good. How you call it good and it's bad? <laughs> now let us see some evidence. As long as you ask for Sahih al Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, and then you have to agree with me that your prophet is a fraud and all the story is made up to cover up his stupidity. This is uh, <clears throat> let us see this one. Remember, you want Sahih, right? Look how many hadith we have. Those about your prophet, even I will make a topic about your prophet, even forget the prayer. Bring us Sahih al Bukhari or Sahih Muslim. Hmm. This is al Bukhari 5037. This is Sahih Muslim. Seven eight eight a and the translation is false. You see here, <clears throat> uh, the Muslim they say, and I had missed in such and such surah. I has had missed. The guy he just said you has reminded me what missed. It says asqatuha, which mean I dropped it during the prayer. But you will see here they don't know even how to fabricate their translation much. I mean. They try to cover it in one place, but other place they forgot to. Maybe it's different translator, more honest. This is Sahih Bukhari, the one you asked for. I hope now you will not say Sahih Bukhari is a liar. The Messenger of Allah had a man reciting the Quran at night and said, He heard the Quran, the, the man reciting the Quran. He said, May Allah bestow his mercy on him. As he reminded me of such and such verses of such and such surah, which I was caused to be forgot to forget. <laughs> well, now what you will do? You asked me for Sahih al Bukhari, we gave you Sahih al Bukhari. You asked me for Sahih Muslim, I gave you Sahih Muslim. And by the end, by the way, he called me donkey, etc. Don't talk about donkeys, my friend. The donkey is the one who believe your prophet stories. As an example, as long as you like Sahih al-Bukhari. And you believe in Sahih al-Bukhari. And you are talking about donkeys. So what Sahih al-Bukhari says about you raising your head before the Imam finished the prayer? Read carefully. And you cannot say to me, this is not correct. This is not good. Because you are the one who said, I like Sahih al-Bukhari. Remember, this is your text, is it? Sahih al-Bukhari. So, bring me authentic hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari. What do you want more? And this is Sahih al-Bukhari or Sahih Muslim. What do you want more? We are bringing you from Sahih Muslim and al-Bukhari. And as long as you are talking about donkeys, what do you want more? The Prophet said, trying to scare the Muslims, speaking to them as a, they are a bunch of kids, like you know, in the Middle East, they have a very uh, stupid culture. They scare their kids, like don't go out of this road, otherwise there is a monster in this in, in the corner to keep their children in the in front of the house. 
Fear, always fear. It's a culture of fear. The culture of fear and intimidation. Terrorism, actually. So here you notice, Muhammad is trying to implement his fiction fear in the mind of those who follow him in order to force them to do something he want them to do. Don't raise your head. And the reason he don't want them to raise their head because Muhammad, he was afraid that he is doing something wrong. He did not do it at the same time. And we can make a topic about it maybe next time about Muhammad. He don't know how to pray. He forgot how to pray. Have you ever heard of a prophet? He forgot how to pray. He taught, he taught them how to pray, but he did not know how to do it twice. So the prophet said, isn't it? I remember here, who is saying that? Your prophet. Isn't he who raises his head before the Imam afraid that Allah may transform his head into the head of a donkey or his figure, which means face, into the face of a donkey? Sahih al Bukhari. Question. Where Muhammad he learned that if somebody raise his head, Allah will make his head the head of a donkey. Some smart Muslim who noticed that this is very stupid, they try to say, oh, this is metaphorical. My friend, what metaphorical? Aren't you afraid? Like he didn't say, <clears throat> uh, I mean, if somebody raises his head, what, what is the problem? First of all, let us say, Muhammad, maybe he can say, oh, this is the, the, the way you pray is not accepted this way. Allah will not accept your prayer. Okay, that will be go fine. You have to pray in such a way, and then your prayer will be accepted. But Allah will make your head, your face, a face of a donkey. What is that? What I learned from this? So Allah will turn your face for a face of a donkey if you raise your head. But if you are raping a woman, he will not make your face a face of a donkey. And did it happen to any one of you? When you raise your head before the imam, before the imam Allah turned. So this is a stupid statement. This is in Sahih Bukhari. And we can find you tens of things, millions of things in Sahih Bukhari. All of it is stupid. So the Muslim desperation, always when a Muslim you show him something, is very embarrassing. He will say, this is Da'if Hadith. This is weak Hadith. This is not accepted Hadith. Oh, this guy, his name, etc. He is not, he is very well known, is not a trustworthy. Suddenly, he is not a trustworthy. So if he is not trustworthy, why he is, why his name in your book? Oh, let me write a name of an untrustworthy person speaking about my prophet in my book. Hmm? Let me tell you, what he said, and this is supposed to learn what the prophet said, but yet he is not a trustworthy. So you will notice here that Muhammad is a messed up person. It's like someone he is taking too much drugs. He say things, obviously they don't match. He cannot repeat, this, repeat the same story twice, like as we saw here. Who is the one who asked for more Quran? Is it Muhammad? As we see here, Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari. Or it is Mikael, which is authentic hadith too. <clears throat> who is the one who is asking for more? Muhammad saying, I seek burden <clears throat> from Allah. I want more Quran. Or it is Mikael saying, oh, teach him more, teach him more. Because one of them is true, the other one is false, or either both of them they are false too. But saying the same story, and the story does not match, then the story is obviously a fraud. And now they are saying here, it is uh, Sahih. So what we would do? I mean, is it Sahih? It says Sahih. 
Also, we Muslims, we say it is sahih, but it's not sahih. It is authentic, but it's not authentic. We lie to ourselves too. I'm sure in the chat there, in the text, we disabled the chat, by the way, because some people, they are fighting with each other, and I don't want that in my program. So, we say it is sahih, but in their refutation, we will say, oh no, this guy is very well known as a liar. Like, come on, let me find you the name of the person who repaired this. And you will see the game will start. It says that Yaqub, uh, the son of Ibrahim, he said that Yahya from Humaid, from, 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 and Ubay, or oh, Ubay is a big fat liar. <laughs> so in order to avoid the stupidity, they have to throw it in someone else. And they have to make what is written in their books as authentic, not authentic no more. For this is the only way to escape, you know, the scandal. A prophet, he cannot remember his own Quran. Why? You tell me. A prophet speaking that two angels came to him and his followers, they never noticed that such a thing is exist. Do you ask yourself why Muhammad never mentioned this story before he started reciting the Quran? Why didn't say to them, listen, you might hear the Quran from me recited it twice or three times or four times or five times in different way because the angels they told me that Muhammad he did not mention this story until people they start complaining saying hey prophet I heard you saying the Quran this way this guy he said he heard you the Quran in such a way which one of them is correct and then suddenly Muhammad he revealed a secret What is a secret? When they ask him, they put him in the corner, O Prophet of Allah, didn't you touch, teach me such a such a verse? He said, yes. And the other man, he said, don't you teach me such a such a verse? And when, which means he was reciting the verse for him, the way he recited. He said, yes. So Muhammad, they agree with both. And then he said, well, you know, Jibreel, I, I, I did not tell you what happened, brother and sister. Jibreel and Mikael, peace be upon them, they came to me, brother, and Jibreel sat in my right, and Mikael sat in my left, and Jibreel, peace upon him, he said to me, recite the Quran in which way, and recitation, and Mikael said to him, please, brother, recite it more. Teach him more. More, more, more. And the more, more, the more verses is messed up. So teach him more until there is seven verses mood. <laughs> and by the way, I will finish with this. The idea that Allah he gave Muhammad seven Quran, and this is the way to make it perfect. That's mean Allah he cannot make one Quran and perfectly clear. So I have to write, imagine I have my books. <clears throat> I have to write them seven times seven times in different way in order you understand what I'm saying I mean do you see how bad my writing is I have to write for you the Quran a book which is supposed to be a book of God and Allah is so good in his writing he knew how to explain things to you to the point he have to write the same story seven times in order to understand it. And Muhammad is saying clearly, my people are would not be able to do so, are not capable to do so. لا تطيق ذلك. So Allah have to re rewrite the Quran seven times to fix the problem. There's a problem here. Maybe people don't notice that Muhammad is saying to Allah, there is a problem. One Quran is not good. Your qualification of writing is bad. We don't understand you. You need to write the Quran. Look how many times the story is reported. You 
you need to write or rewrite the Quran seven times. And then that will make the Quran good to go. <clears throat> I don't know how smart a human being can be, how stupid he can be, but I'm very sure that a human being can be very stupid. And I do not need a proof of that. I mean, all the evidence in the front of us showing us that this man is a fraud. And then there is people, they believe in him. God, he need the Quran to be written seven times in order to Quran to be clear. And is it clear now? The Quran is the most confused book, confusing book ever. Even the Quran says there's a huge part of it nobody knows what this means save Allah, which is very stupid to send a book and nobody understand what the Quran or those verses is about. Not including even Muhammad himself do not know. One of the funny things, <clears throat> Muhammad he said to them, when you read the Quran, read what is easy for you. <laughs> <laughs> to explain why he is making the Quran seven times, he said, Read what is ever easy for you. Is that a choice? Easy for you? <laughs> Are you saying there's some easy, some hard? Okay, what about we make the easier is the Quran we read and forget about the rest of the six Quran? As long as there is easy and there's hard. Are you saying the Quran have a standard of difficulty and there is easy Quran and there is hard Quran? And as long the problem is my people are not capable of doing it, what about from the beginning you gave us the easy one and forget about the hard one? <laughs> what a hilarious man. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good time. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is not good, as you see. And uh, I hope we learned something good. Uh, feel free to download the video, share it in your page, in your YouTube, in your Facebook. And for sure, we appreciate people who download the video and add subtitle in their own language. So people, they can increase their knowledge. And as you see, we never say something without showing a proof in the screen. We show you the reference. This is their website. This is not my website. This is a very Islamic website translated posted by the muslim money this is not my website and this is not my translation and those are not my words and yet you will see in the comment and be my witness the muslim calling me liar everything we are showing you is from their book from their prophet words they are the witness for it it's not us then you read it for them and then they will say, you're a liar. Actually, you will notice that Muslims, when the first time they heard about different version of the Quran, they were accusing each other of being liars. I mean, why? what the benefit of this Quran, seven Quran? If you read here the story, you will see, Allah Messenger taught me it this way, I mean, like this guy is saying to the other person, the other person said to him, no, you are telling a lie. You see how this, this crazy man is causing problems? You are telling a, a, a lie, a Muslim saying to other Muslim, you are telling a lie. He taught me in this way, in different way from what you, to, you have recited. And then I started leading, dragged, dragged him. He dragged the person. They are almost, you know, killing each other. And he said to Muhammad, I heard, I heard this man reciting the Surah Al-Furqan in a way that you have not taught me. Which means all this time Muhammad is teaching Quran to his followers. And he never mentioned to them that Allah, he sent angels and they told him he asked them 
that one Quran is not enough. How and why Muhammad is hiding such an important message that you guys you are going to receive seven Qurans. And is it really seven Qurans? Or now we have to match it with seven because Muhammad he said seven. If Muhammad he said 80, we have to match it with 80. As you notice here, obviously, this is a proof that there is no way Muhammad ever mentioned that Allah gave him Quran in seven ways. Muslims are fighting each other. This is a small town. I mean, this is not like a, we live in New York and there's millions of people. This is a small community. Yet Muhammad, he failed to say that he have seven Quran to deliver, not one. To the point Muslims themselves are fighting each other, accusing of each other of being liars. And then Muhammad, he said, well, you know what? Uh, I did not tell you. Uh, yeah, it's revealed to me in this way and it revealed to you this way too. It's true, both of them. For Allah, he gave me, uh, uh, have been revealed to be recited in seven different ways. Okay, hold on. One last comment. Did Allah give Muhammad seven ways of every verse immediately? If not, that's mean this religion is so stupid again. Why? Because Allah gave you a verse in one way, and then through time, Muhammad and Allah they notice that one way is not enough. Or Allah he gave him seven ways right away, but Muhammad he decided to give us one. Which means Muhammad is a fraud again. He hide other six ways. Why he hide then? So whatever you choose, Muhammad is a fraud. I will leave you to make a judgment. I believe this is a very important video for those who they are looking for uh, to do research and uh, a good study for those expose uh, very well the fraud of the man who claimed to be a prophet of Allah, the God who provide us women for sex, boys, and heaven full of shish kebab, hummus, and falafel. Actually, all those things are not exist, sorry, except the sex and boys and a buffet of uh, bird there's no beef in heaven of allah there's no shrimp only birds mm. yeah <clears throat> and uh, for sure the women who they are extremely hot and sexy uh, to the point we will see uh, the marrow of their bones which is very beautiful by the way i mean you know uh, can you, i don't know how we, how we can how we can deny such a beauty that women you know, we will see their more of their bones. Uh, it's very, really, very beautiful, and I cannot wait to get such a woman. Uh, not only women; I mean, a lot of women. They are so beautiful, so pure, transparent to the point you will see the more of their bones. Isn't it obvious that this man is mentally ill? He is just racist, sick racist, who is obsessed, and his followers obsessed with white women. He promised them white women to the point you can see through. This is about white women who they are transparent. He is saying to them how much white they are to the point they are transparent. Does it make sense that there's a God? He will give me in heaven women they are transparent. And I can see the mirror of their bones. Is that even beautiful? Or this is ugly and disgusting like x-ray? So everything this man he said is not only a fiction, it's the stupidity of fiction. You can't be a person who is stable, your brain is functioning fine, and you believe in such a promise. For it is disgusting, it is a stupid, it's not even beautiful. And remember here, there's a God he wanna promise me women I never met. Which means there's no love, there is no relation. It's just a woman made for you. She is a toy. Have fun. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you all. I hope you did enjoy your time. And I will see you again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we prove it every day. This is your brother Christian Prince. I appreciate you all. We love you all. And again, if you like always to be updated, you can join us in Patreon. 
so you will know what is the coming video will be when it's going to be and the link is you see it in the screen you can join us there and we appreciate people who support us if they will to support thank you and god bless you take care